Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, I'm going to talk about generators. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you might have noticed that I've covered some cool ways to use electricity, but how do we actually generate electricity? Well, as you might expect, that's done through a generator. Depending on if you want direct or DC current or AC, or alternating current, and your budget, time, materials, that type of stuff, there are lots of different ways to generate electricity. One of my favorite ways uh, is a thermoelectric generator. And what that does is it takes a temperature difference or a temperature differential and it produces a current from that. So this is a Peltier junction. And if you insulate one side and heat up the other side, you'll get a small current out the other end. It also works in reverse, so you apply a current, one side heats up, the other side gets cold. You're probably most familiar with batteries, which convert chemical energy into electrical energy, and hopefully solar panels, which convert energy from the sun, or light, uh, from photons into electrical energy using the photoelectric effect. The way that we get most of our household electricity uh, is through the use of large-scale generators. Um, for our purposes, I'm going to focus on DC generators, and uh, I'll kind of talk about those and the practical applications of them. So fortunately for us, I already covered the physics of generators when I talked about motors. A generator is really just a motor in reverse. So if I take this big motor and I rotate its axle, I'll get a current out the other end versus applying a current and getting a rotational motion. So that's really cool. It means that I can take an existing object and use it to convert uh, mechanical energy into electrical energy. And so, as you might expect, the way that this is done is using the Lorentz force. Basically that a moving electric field generates a magnetic field and a moving magnetic field generates an electric field. So in the case of a generator, we're taking a magnetic field and we're moving a conductor within that magnetic field and that movement causes a current in the conductor and that current will be collected on the brushes of the motor and then you can use it to do some work. Sweet, all right, well how do I actually rotate the axle of the motor? I mean, I can sit here and I can spin it, but I'm not very efficient and I'm probably gonna get tired. So one of the common ways to rotate the axle is to use a turbine or basically a big propeller. An easy way to do this at home would be to attach a turbine to the end of it and stick it outside and let the wind turn it. So if you want to figure out the voltage and the current output of your generator, you can use a multimeter like this and just connect it to the terminals of your motor. So I'm going to use this computer fan that I pulled from a desktop and I'm going to connect it to my multimeter. Turn it on to the voltage setting and then uh, use my hair dryer to uh, rotate the, the fan. <laughs> All right, so I tried to show you the voltage output on the multimeter, but just in case it wasn't totally visible, uh, I got maybe three to 400 millivolts of power, or uh, <laughs> of voltage out. So not too much, but for something that I got for free, uh, not too bad also. So I can get creative with this and attach a bunch of them together or uh, do something tricky like use this to charge a uh, low power battery so that I can store the energy over time. So lots of applications for super easy DIY generators at home. So I'll leave you with a question and that question is, what happens if you rotate the axle of the motor in the opposite direction? So if I have this motor and I'm rotating it in this direction to get a current out, and then I suddenly switch it to this direction, what happens to the output of the generator? So check out the next video for an answer to that question. And to answer last week's question, I asked, when you have a parallel configuration of a blue LED and an orange LED powered by a coin cell, why doesn't the blue LED light up? Well, actually, that's a really cool kind of collision of electromagnetic uh, theory as well as circuit theory. And so basically, it's because on the electromagnetic spectrum, blue light is higher energy and shorter wavelength than red light. So basically, the blue LED needs more power 
in order to turn it on because it's higher energy. So you can also think about it like the shorter wavelength of light has a higher voltage drop. Since the orange LED and the blue LED are in parallel, electrons are lazy, so they're like, oh, blue LED requires more energy for us to pass through it, so let's skip it and only go through the orange LED. So that's basically why the blue LED doesn't turn on, because it's higher energy due to the light that it's outputting, and thus requires more power. So please let me know if you have any questions about that explanation or about DC generators. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.